death wheel. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking heavy metal, man. Heavy metal. And wait a second. What's going on here? Mr. Tadpole, what's going on? You look like you lost a couple of limbs there. Oh, what? Oh man, really? You got caught like in this nice, nice time warp in space? You lost gravitational pull and it uh, reversed your your life cycle? Oh my goodness. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, my friend. Wow. Man, does this mean you're just going to keep like devolving? <laughs> I mean, you're going to... Yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to laugh. But you're going to actually end up going back into like being like a frog egg then oh my goodness hey well i'm really sorry there buddy i i you know i, I don't know if i can help you on that one there um yeah man i really like to well, that's troublesome but you know what no offense little tadpole guy but you know what we have a video we have to do sorry okay anyway anyway well welcome to uh review two we're talking chapter nine let's start with question number six look for a pattern and what do we have going on here well i see a pattern figure one figure two figure three and figure four Ooh, it's getting bigger each time well, that's kind of interesting do you see the core of my design i'm noticing right away those three boxes right in like the center see i can see two boxes being added on here and then like it doubles for the next time or two more boxes are added. By figure four, you can see now we have three. It's pretty straightforward. So ask what the rule is. Well, what's happening? So from figure one to figure two, you can see here I have three boxes and here I have five. Well, that's a difference of two. And now from two to three, I have my three core boxes. But then since I had five here, now I have three and then I have the four, so I have seven. So it looks like to me the rule is add two so two additional boxes are being added on by each figure how many scores will there be in figure five well if we have our three and then we have our six that would be nine well two more yeah that would be eleven so it'd be eleven squares and we'd end up with one additional box here see and one more up here to get our two wow cool pretty simple let's just keep going here some of these problems are really easy now it says, Lindsay made a map of her town. Match each location below with the correct ordered pair that marks it on the coordinate grid. Not every ordered pair will be used. Ooh, okay. Now we have a clock tower. Well, a couple things here we want to get squared away right away. And it's a little bit of a review. But recall, this is the x-axis and this is the y-axis up here. And remember, we always write everything as x, y. So when we write a coordinate pair, that would mean, for example, for this 4, that is our x. This is our y. And that's true for all of these. So this 1 here in this coordinate would be 1 and then 3. So the x is 1, the y is 3. And that's important to know. And it's also important to know because x comes before y. So that means we're always going to move across this grid with the x value first, then, and only then, we go to the y, okay? So for the clock tower, I'm looking at this, I'm going, okay, here's my one. So that would mean my coordinate pair has to be one because I got to do x first, and then I have one, two, three. So the coordinate that I'm looking for this one here is going to be one, three. And do we have a one, three? We do. It's right there. Let's get that line in. Okay, so let's move to the next one here. We have Art Museum. Look for Art Museum. Here it is. I see that the X first is 2, and then 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, the ordered pair would be 2, 4, and I see a 2, 4 right here. And there we go. We good with that? See, 4, 2 is a completely different one. Look at that. 4 here, and then 2, that's actually the train station. And we don't have a train station here. It doesn't look like we have a train station. Let's go to the East Park. East Park, we have four. And we have one, two, three, four. Four, four. That was the one that we looked up there. Okay, let's go ahead and do this one. Movie theater. Wow, right here. Going across always, horizontally with the X value, four. And then one, 
four, one. See, you gotta be careful. Here's a one, four. We don't want that one. Finally, we have school. Where's our school? Way up there. So look at it's lined up with the four x value, and it's all the way up at the five for school. See how those two lines meet? Okay, four, five. There's four, five. Okay, I think that's how I like my lines. Yes, looks pretty good. All right. Now here it says Lucy's house is located at the point shown on the coordinate grid. Ainsley's house is located two units right and three units down from Lucy's house. Plot a point on the coordinate grid to represent the location of Ainsley's house. First thing says, what ordered pair represents the location of Lucy's house? Well, again, we're looking at our x, y. I like to tend to write that down. That's our ordered pair. X must come first. Here we have three, and then here we have five. So the five and the three meet, but the three for the x must come first. And this is really something that you're wanting to be careful with, especially on an exam. It'd be very easy just to switch it by just going too fast. So you want to make sure that you're very careful that you put those, to put that ordered pair correctly. Now it says, what ordered pair represents the location of Ainsley's house? Well, it said that it was two units to the right, okay, from Lucy's house. So that means we're going to go one unit here, two units, brings us right here. And then it says three units down. So we're going to come down one, two, and finally three. One, two, three. All right, so now we're three units down, and this is where Ainsley's house is. What's the coordinate, the ordered pair that represents her? Well, that's going to be five for the x first, and then two, the y second. So five, two. Okay, let's cruise to the next page. This is going to be a short video. I can feel it. Ooh, what's hidden? No. Oh, it's you again, my buddy, who's struggling, huh? Trying to get your life back, huh? Because you're, yeah. You know, I wish I could help you. I don't know what to do. I mean, I really want to help our little friend, but I don't know. It's kind of hard to look at you, knowing you're missing stuff. <laughs> okay. Hey, no, I'm sorry I didn't laugh out loud, did I? Oops. Okay, it says, each week Maria saves some of her allowance. The line graph shows the amount of Maria's savings for the first five weeks of the year. It says for numbers 9A through 9B, select true or false for each statement. Well, let me first take a look at the graph. Uh, here we have week. Okay, it shows the week 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Here it shows the savings. Now here it jumps to 30. So here we have 30, 35, 40, 45. Okay. And so it says Maria's savings increased from $30 to $55 over the five-week period. Was that true? Well, the five-week period was started on week 1. She did have 30. And by week 5, she has 55. So from 30 to 55. It did increase. Yes, that's absolutely true. Yes. You get to be true. The greatest increase in Maria's savings. Key words there. Greatest increase in Maria's savings occurred from week one to week two. All right, let's see if that's true. From week one to week two, we see a $5 increase. She was at 30. By week two, she was up to 35. From 30, and I'm going to tend this is incorrect. Just by looking at my graph, I can see there's a steeper incline as we go up. Here looks gradual too. So we went from 35, look, it didn't even get to 40. So that's less than $5. Definitely not from week two to three. And then here uh, we have, it looks like probably about 38. There's a, big, there's a bigger jump. So that already can't be true because from one to two was $5. Now this is more than $5 from this to here. Well, in fact, this is even greater. 45 to 55, that's a $10. $10 increase from week four to week five. So no, this is definitely false. And if I were to ask what the correct answer should have been, should have been week four to week five. That would have been the correct answer. That's how that could have been true. Okay, now let's come down and take a look at question number 10. Oh, okay, there you are, still down there. Sorry, fella. Here it says, the line plot shows the weights of bags of beans. What is the average weight of the bags? Show your work. Okay, we're going to do this problem a little bit different than we did in the previous uh, review uh, page, review one of this chapter, uh, because we have decimals and I went in to start dividing them out and that was definitely a little bit more work. Let's see if we can do that keeping these all as fractions. The important thing we need to know about finding the average weight is again, this is about adding all of the 
data, all of the items, and then dividing it by the number that you have. So once we have that total, adding them. So we need to add all these points here. We have to add one, five, six. We need to add two thirds four times, like making four copies, which means we can multiply. And the same with one half, we're gonna make three copies of one half and so forth. So let's go ahead and start doing that first. So with one six, we're gonna multiply that by two because we need two copies of them. And that's going to equal two over six, which let's just reduce that which is equal to one third. I make it easier to add later. Now we have one third and we're gonna multiply that by two. And that's already in simplest form. We can't reduce that anymore. And now we have one half times three and that's gonna of course be three over two, which would be the same as one and one half. And next we have two thirds and that's gonna be times four and that is gonna equal two and two thirds. Now what we want to do is make sure that we add that five six on at the end. There's just one of those. So if I'm, so what I need to do here is I need to take one third plus two thirds, and then finally that five six at the very end. Now you might notice like right away I see all uh, denominators that look like they would have a common denominator of six because three times two is six, and of course two times three is six. So let's go ahead and put all of these make equivalent fractions. Okay, so one third if we made six, it's just saying like three times two is six, therefore we'd multiply the top. So that's equal to two six plus two thirds. That's going to be four six. That's just the equivalent fraction plus one. And here's going to be three six plus two. And then again, we have another four six. Then we have five six. Make it easy because we need that common denominator in order to add all of these fractions. Well, let's go ahead and just add the fractions. The whole part, I have one and two. And so that'll be three. Let's go ahead and put that down. Take care of the whole numbers. Now we have two plus four is six. Six plus three is nine. Nine plus four is 13. And 13 plus 15 is 18. So that's going to be 18 over six. Now we have three whole parts and we have our 18 divided by six and 18 divided by six is three. So we have our three whole parts plus another three holes is going to give us six. So when we add all of these fractions together, all of the points, we get six. Now how many items did we have? Well, let's count them. We have two and there's another one. There's four. 4 plus 3 is 7, 7 plus 4 is 11, and then so we have 12. So we have 12 items. So we need to take this total now, 6, and we need to take the 6, and we need to divide it by the number of items, which is 12, and that gives us 6 twelfths. It's going to divide out a common factor, which I see 6. So we'll divide 6 out from both, and we end up with 1 over 2. Our answer is 1 half. All right, I think I'll leave the work how it is. So did we address the question, what is the average weight of the bags? That would be the one half, okay? And then it's to show your work. Well, we did, we showed our work, okay? Pretty simple. That's how we find average. Let's move on. The table shows how much a puppy weighs from one month old to five months old. Puppy's weight, okay, here we have age in months, and the weight, the unit of measure is going to be pounds. So after one month or one month, the puppy is going to weigh 12 pounds, and then after the second month, it's 18, and so forth. What ordered pairs would you plot to show the puppy's weight on a coordinate grid? Question number one. How do you think the ordered pairs would be different if the puppy's weight was measured every week instead of every month? Explain your reasoning. All right, so it looks like we have a few things here. Well, first things first, this is what ordered pairs would you plot to show the puppy's weight on a coordinate grid? Well, we'd have two, two values here. We have the age and we have the weight. So we'd probably want to show the age, maybe on the X axis, and then we could show the weight on the Y. So let's go ahead and put those ordered pairs first. So we would have, again, one, 12, because this would represent the X, and this would represent the Y, what I would do. And lastly, five, 34, okay. Next question, how do you think the ordered pairs would be different if the puppy's weight was measured every week instead of every month? Well, first thing, if it was every week, that's more frequent, right? Month is four weeks approximately in each month. So we would have more ordered pairs, first of all, because we would be plotting more points because we'd be doing it every single week rather than every month. And um, that means we're just gonna have more weights, 
you know, along with that, because each weight would correspond or match up with each week as well. What else did it ask? In order for it to be different, the public so it was measured every week in several months. Is there anything else? Um, probably if you're doing it every week too, this seems significant, you would probably not see the, the big increase like you would on a graph. So if you were plotting points every month, you probably would see a graph that would be very, very steep. But if you're doing it every week, uh, you wouldn't see that increase as fast because it would be spread out more. So your graph might look a little bit more like like this, if that can kind of make sense. You have your, your line, okay? Because you had more points along the graph because they're not the puppy wouldn't be gaining as much weight uh, each time. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put that answer into words. Okay, so here's my explanation. As I was talking through the problem, I've just put that into words for you. Okay, you know, folks, I can't believe it. It's uh, the end of this math video, and this one went extremely fast. Hey, maybe it's because we're like, oh, maybe that's what's happening. Oh, our buddy up here. It's the time. It's uh, like Einstein's theory of relativity. What's happening is we aren't feeling the effects of gravity, and so time is... Somehow we're going so fast that now we're going in reverse. Ooh, scary. <laughs> well, guys, thanks for coming aboard. And until next time, live long and prosper.